Indeed, there is no award in science that can compete with the Nobel Prize, which was announced in a call from Stockholm in the month of October. In October 1901, Dutch physical chemist Jacobus H. van Hoff was named the first recipient of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his discovery of the laws of chemical kinetics and the law governing osmotic pressure of solutions. At the time, he was a professor in Berlin, but Van Hoff was actually born in the Netherlands and earned his doctorate in Utrecht, Netherlands in 1874. In 1896, he moved to Berlin, where he was offered a position with more research and less teaching, which was what he wanted. He was highly respected within the chemical community for bringing physics and chemistry together. However, when he won the Nobel Prize, it was only two decades after he was highly criticized for his idea on stereochemistry and only one decade after his colleagues disagreed with him on the theory of dilute solutions. When he was a 22-year-old physical chemist at Utrecht, Netherlands, he wrote a paper called Proposal for the Development of Three-Dimensional Chemical Structural Formula. In this paper, he introduced the concept of tetrahedral carbon for the first time, which inspired numerous chemists to study the field of stereochemistry afterwards. But at the time, his proposal of three-dimensional arrangement of atoms received major opposition from organic chemists from Germany. This picture is the 10 asymmetrical models Van Hoff made for his friend, a chemist named G.G.W. Bremer. Bremer used these in his thesis in 1875. These models are currently stored at Borhoff Museum in Leiden, Netherlands. Van Hoff and his friends definitely could not have foreseen over a century later, understanding of the three-dimensional shape of molecules would be so crucial. They inspired so many fellow chemists to study the field of serochemistry, it becomes a crucial subdiscipline of chemistry that spans organic, inorganic, physical, and biochemistry. Although every textbook on organic chemistry will highlight Van Hoff's contribution to the understanding of serochemistry, the Nobel Committee honored Van Hoff's work in the area of physical chemistry. Back then, he was particularly interested in linking the chemical constitution of molecules to their properties, and in giving organic chemistry a physical and mathematical foundation. In 1884, he published this groundbreaking research on chemical kinetics, called Studies in Chemical Dynamics. In this work, he shows the relationship between the concentration of compounds in the chemical reaction and the reaction rate, and how reaction rate is related to temperature. In the second part of his studies, he also proposed now what we call the Van Hoff equation to express the temperature dependence of equilibrium constant. It relates the equilibrium constant Keq to the change in temperature T by the standard enthalpy change delta H of a chemical reaction, and R is the ideal gas constant. It expresses how equilibrium constant increases or decreases with the temperature is linked to whether the reaction enthalpy is positive or negative. In his book, Van Hoff also introduced full-headed arrows pointing in opposite direction to symbolize equilibrium. In his Nobel lecture, this is what he says of equilibrium arrow, and I'll quote, This can be illustrated in the formula by introducing the sign for a reversible reaction instead of the sign of equality. Van Hoff's work in the 19th century really revealed the governing principle of kinetics and thermodynamics in the chemical reaction. Van Hoff was awarded Nobel Prize also for his contribution to the understanding of the osmotic pressure. After the completion of his book, Studies in Chemical Dynamics, he studied the theory of dilute solutions. As Professor Snelders mentioned in his book on the history of science in the Netherlands, Van Hoff used his 1884 summer vacation with his wife and three kids in Hilversum for performing this study. The major contribution is now known as the Van Hoff Factor I. Jacobus van Hoff found a quantitative relationship between osmotic pressure and the solute concentration shown in the equation here. Osmotic pressure pi equals to the van Hoff factor I times the molar concentration of the solute C times the ideal gas constant R times the absolute temperature. The establishment of osmotic pressure is extremely important because considering this vital role in plant and animal life, the membranes of the cells are in fact permeable to water, but not to substances dissolved in the cell fluid. Osmotic pressure can therefore develop in the cells. For example, when the osmotic pressure of the solution outside the blood cells is higher than the osmotic pressure inside the red blood cells, the water inside the blood cells exits the cells to equalize osmotic pressure, causing the cell to shrink. Vice versa. When the osmotic pressure of the solution outside the blood cells is lower than the osmotic pressure inside the red blood cells, the water outside the blood cells enter the cells, causing the cell to burst. In conclusion, 
Osmotic pressure plays a fundamental role in plant and animal life and is of great importance not only in chemistry but in physiology and medicine as well.